Hello SGD, this is Alante Tambo in Peru. This video we're going to look at the issue of moving the stones to the side. It's something that lost ancient high technologists, ancient aliens types put up uh, as a, a, an example, like it cannot be done, therefore some other explanation. But the problem is not moving the stones. The problems are invented by the um, lost ancient high technologists. They pose the things in a very false way. They don't show you what's really going on. And the real issue is that it is no problem at all. So there's Alante Tambo site. There we see the, the Great Wall, as some will call it, the six monolith wall. I've highlighted in yellow the area where all the megaliths are. So it's, they're not spread over the site, they're all there. And that particular spot is right at the end of a ramp. Uh, a great example of the um, ridiculousness that surrounds this would be this video. How did ancient civilizations carry these massive stones to the top of a mountain? Uh, it, it, it's like yeah, just a great example of it because they'll take he takes away their trees, he puts the uh, the actual location on the other side of the Andes Mountains, not where they really are, and it just puts a lot of problems that don't exist up there. So how did ancient civilizations carry these massive stones to the top of a mountain? Well, that's where the actual quarry is. The quarry is not the cliff face; it's beneath it. It's a rockfall quarry, and where do they go? They go. How were they carried to the top of a mountain? Well, the top of a mountain is right there at the bottom of the mountain. Not the top up there, but the top down at the bottom. And so make no mistake, you will not find one single video showing people tugging stones of this size up steep hills, mountains with alleged primitive methods said to be utilised by the lost ancient Inca civilizations of Peru. Well, the issue is that firstly, they did not tug them up the side of, of the mountains. So they, they set up a false problem uh, to you know, to sell this uh, business tour. So here we are at Alante Tampa. There on the right, you can see one half of the Great Wall. On the left, at the top, you can see the Grindic, Grindic outcrop, which sits above the quarry itself. It's a rockfall quarry. Big rocks fall off the cliff to the um, slope below. That's where the uh, stones are harvested from. And you can see the shape of the valley floor, and that's very important. So we'll come back to that. But there's the, the big wall. Uh, again, the, the stones are always exaggerated in their weight and the, the problems are exaggerated by these type of people. So how did they get the stones from the quarry, which is again beneath the, the cliffs, to this final location? Now we have an aerial view. There, in, there is the Great Wall and a spur at the corner at the bottom of the mountain. The long yellow line shows the path that the stones would need to take. This is an aerial view, the distance that they would need to travel is five kilometers or three miles, just slightly, under, almost exactly five kilometers, slightly under that. But the um, problem is that a map like this only really tells us the distance and it tells us how to turn left and right. Links in the description to examples of people actually moving giant stones with primitive technology, turning left and right, pre precisely placing stones, getting them on platforms. Those will be linked in there, this is not a problem. Um, this was just a normal industry practice, you know, before modern advanced machinery. So left or right is not a problem. What we need to really do is not look at an aerial view, but look at the view from the side. So again, down there at the bottom of the mountain is the Alante Tambo um, site. And from this view, we now get an idea of what the actual problem is. Uh, this tells us a lot more about moving the monoliths. It's not a problem of left or right, but it's a problem of up and downs. So back to this view. So when we look at, instead of looking at the aerial view, we just stretch the, don't worry about left or right. This is the shape of the journey that the stones have to take. They come down the mountain, 12 degrees, then down a 40 degree slope, then across the valley floor, which is essentially flat. And then they come up a very gentle ramp. We'll come to that, but they exact, this is, um, they use wild exaggerations, yeah, problems that aren't there. Okay, so let's go a little bit further. Firstly, that's not the quarry. Quarries are there underneath, Rockfall Quarry. Here's a, another view. Bottom left in the pin is the Alante Tambo site. Zoom in. We can still see the roads, ramps, um, the retaining walls that were uh, made by the Inca uh, to quarry these stones. They built, if you had a giant block, they didn't, they built a, a road to there and then just ramped it down. Just to highlight it, this is uh, Jean-Pierre Protz and Inca quarrying and stone cutting. Just got to flip that map upside down. You can see, zoom in, place it over the top and you can see how it fits in. There at uh, survey point 115, 
Uh, I'll put this video in the description. Um, can Cantera de Cachicata Aleantabo. The quarry is called Cachicata, and you can see uh, the retaining walls, ramps that were built to the stone and then transport to transport them down, are still visible. Uh, also at survey point 115 are two very large blocks. You get an idea of them there. We've got the scoop marks, you know, the stone working tool marks. Uh, here's another couple of examples of a state, lot to be seen there, of course, just not covered by the lost ancient high technologists. These rocks come off the cliff and that's it now. Take a valley view again. So the quarries, now Google Street View, again, not the quarry, quarries are there. So again, they, how did they carry these massive stones to the top of the mountain? Now he'll even pose the question that like it's, how did they bring them you know, down, the, even down the mountain is a problem. Okay, not the quarries, not the cliffs, he's standing on the, on the solution. Uh, Brian Foster is another one who's into this shenanigans and um, even says that the roads only go two thirds of the way to the quarry. Again, like the mystery of where was, how did they move f from the quarry to, no, the roads go all the way to the very top of the quarry because the quarry is just not what they, where they say it is. He's actually visited the quarry, which is again, is more condemning. Um, you know, they know the answers. They're standing on the ramp right next to the ramp, but they never tell you that. They even go to the quarry, but not tell you any of the answers. Loves to fiddle around with bones though, you know, elongated skull type of stuff. Um, cool, yeah, this has all been covered. Uh, most quarries people would imagine being dug out from the bedrock. Well, another form of quarry, again, is like a rock fall quarry. Whenever you have a big mountain or a cliff, what do you have at the bottom? Piles of stones and, and, um, and you know, rocks, pebbles. But when the stones come off a rock fall quarry such as this, well, they tend to, you know, you see any sort of natural block that you find anyway, they're not spherical. They sort of almost tend to be block design already. And so they've been quarried for you, then you just need to shape them and you know, find the one that's the right size, shape it down, and you're all right to go. The roads and ramps, again, are still visible from there. And of course, if just not covered by any of these create a fake mystery to um, create a problem to create a mystery to sell tour tickets cliffs quarries not a problem roads ramps still very visible and again as uh, it was visible but again in the literature which apparently they've never read they like to comment on what's not in the literature and what hasn't been studied uh, yet it's available and is out there so what you have is a series of roads or ramps that are a gentle slope of 8 to 12 degrees, retaining walls, you know, the road was built to the stone. And also you had a series of slides, uh, some up to 250 metres, that are about 40 degrees. So zoom in, that was sort of something, now I've just highlighted it in colour. So the blue is the 8 to 12 degree ramps, the reds are the slides, and so all nice and easy to really get that down to the valley floor so back to that view so the first issue is getting them from the quarry down to the valley floor well, downward ramps downward slide not a problem uh, the problem going downhill isn't moving the stone so for you know here we have the horse uh, the oxen or the men whatever's pulling it if you're going across horizontal land or if you're going uphill you have them out in front but in that same move, a 250 tonne block using primitive technology to do almost all of it. Uh, going downhill, you have the rope behind. <clears throat> the issue, the problem is stopping the stone. It's not moving it. And uh, if you've set up your roads and ramps, well, just like a slippery dip in a park, you slide down and when you get to that flat bit at the bottom, you just stop. Uh, another easy solution would be just put a big pile of sand or stones in front and so that's another way to stop it but if you've designed your roads uh, ramps and slides well once it's moving just keep it going um, if, the, if the biggest problem you have moving a big stone is stopping it well that's an excellent problem to have uh, here's a you know, um, again like how did they you know even get it down the stone now the guys pushing on that stone and you know they're not really it's the guys on the levers you know once the lever people stop working, the stone stops moving. When the lever people get their action together, it goes off. It's, uh, yeah, getting them down there is not a problem at all. Okay, so after you got it down on the valley floor, well, the southern part of the valley, 
it's basically flat flat ground. It's slightly downhill, so you have a slight advantage until you get to the river. So that first, you've already done half of a five kilometre um, three mile journey has already been done. Then you get, to, now, might be worth pointing out something again that uh, I think plagues the ancient aliens, lost high technology type people. They have just no idea of how privileged they are and how not very long ago people used to get paid to lift heavy things all day and then they went home to sit down. Um, that's another thing, like, you're very, uh, yeah, but they're not hands-on people, let's put it that way. Um, now we sit down at work all day and then we pay for the privilege to lift stuff after work as if it's a, a leisure, uh, leisure activity. All of human history, you did this because you had to, now we lift weights because it's yeah, leisure, it's fun. So it's all downhill for the first half of the move until we get to the river. We take a little close up of a river and what do we like how did they get it across the river well the river runs dry for a good part of the year the river itself especially this high up in the mountains and at this part um at alante tambo it's a series of pools connected by little trickles so it's you know you barely call it a river um for most part of the year so you can cross the river without getting your feet wet the stone wouldn't get wet and once you're across the river now you begin the uphill journey and that's well, across the valley floor, very slight uphill incline, not a problem at all. And so that's where we are now. So the second half of the journey, 2.5, 1.5 miles, is technically uphill, and but it's essentially horizontal. And uh, okay, so how did they move to the top of the mountain again? It's at the bottom of a mountain. And the steep slight, like, they, how did they move it up steep? You know, there's no videos of people moving heavy blocks up steep hills. Well, there actually are. Not as heavy as he would like, but that's a problem that he's asking for a, for a demonstration of something that didn't happen. So, again, it's a, a false um, demand. Very in, in, incredibly entitled, these people, you know, like everyone must do their labour for them. Uh, so it's not at the bottom, but the top is at the bottom. So up, you know, make no mistake, you'll not find a single video of people tugging stones on this of this size up steep hills mountains with alleged primitive methods said to be utilised by lost ancient Inca civilizations of Peru. Well, since cameras and um, has become popular, people have been not using primitive methods. So it's, a, it's an absolutely ridiculous uh, ask to make, you know, like again, why don't you, they, they invest no time, no money in this, they just uh, profit from it. So, and secondly, this was, it wasn't dragged up a steep hills mountains. He's been to the site, he stood on the, on the actual ramp, it will show in a moment. Uh, this, they're, they're incredibly stupid, like really, really, really stupid, or they're deceptive and they're con men. There's no two ways around that. They lie their asses off all the time. They'll tell you what the academics have done and where this and that. Um, so they've read the material and are lying about it to sell a false narrative or they haven't read the material but are commenting on it, uh, which is a, a lie in itself. So, And they're doing it for money, so that's very deceptive. So the last part of the uphill journey is essentially across flat land, a little bit across the valley, then we follow the road, which runs along the, the, the base of the mountains. Uh, again, links in the description. This um, In places like Sumba, Indonesia, for instance, you can see them, how easily they move and how quickly they can move things across... Um, gently sloping land even up up hills as well but the final part of it now i've got to say graham hancock you know even uh, and yusef iowa and these are experts you know high gurus amongst ancient lost high technology even they admit it's completely false you know they deny the proven physics of mechanical advantage therefore anti-gravity or uh, telekinesis no joke that's what they say um, and they say that the, if a slope is more than 10 degrees, you cannot lift heavy stones. So if we're under 10 degrees, we don't have a problem. Even the, the, the high priests of um, this phony baloney New Age religion scam, um, even, within the real, even within the fake parameters that they have set, we're well within that because the last part is the hardest part and it is to move up this ramp. You can see the ramp there, uh, all the... Gently sloping ramp, not a single ancient lost high technologist has ever seemed to notice this. Even they stand, they ask the question, how did they drag them up the mountainside? Well, it's, again, it's at the bottom of the mountain, and they pose that question standing on the ramp. 
uh, or it's six feet away if they turned over their shoulder. They know it's there, they're scammers. Uh, here's another view. Now, um, there's the, the monoliths, that's where they are. Again, like all the megaliths are in this area and literally that's the ramp there, okay? There it is, it leads right there. They stand there and they, again, uh, the, the solution is to how did they not see it is a very simple solution. It's the profits they make from their research tools. Because, again, literally standing on the ramp at the bottom of a mountain and he, he poses a question, how did they lit, drag them up the mount, to the top of a mountain up the steep hills? Like, they know it's false. Uh, Brian Foster's got, uh, I'll link this, Majestic Inca, um, Alante Tambo in Peru, skillful piloting of the drone to avoid looking at the ramp and even an edit in there. Uh, that's, that's between 3 minutes 50 and 4 minutes 32. You can see him avoid the ramp and you can even see the transition where he does a sideways um, move and transitions just so that the next shot comes in when the ramp's not in view. He knows it's there. He's a con man. Uh, he did another one, Farah Exploration of Ancient Alante Tambo, Sacred Valley of Peru, Farah uh, Exploration. So he's basically travelling where this, and again, very deftly, very carefully moves the camera in such ways never to show the ramp. Standing right next to it, no way he could miss it. These guys are con men and frauds. And so there's the actual ramp. So whether you're on the road, which would, runs beneath it, or if you're on the rail line, which is the view you get here, there's no way you can really miss it, especially if you've been there so many times and are so expert and have researched, you know, ancient history. I'm an ancient history nerd, all things interest. No, you're not. They're con. So, again, just a point, that's where the, where the wall is, right there at the very, very top of the ramp. Let's use that line. It's about 7 to 8 degrees, so less than 10 degrees. Uh, so beneath the maximum, false maximum set by lost ancient high technologists, who all agree that these physics are possible. So this is absolutely possible. Make no mistake, you'll not find a single video. Well, make no mistake, it's not up a steep hill or a mountain. It's on the ramp that you stand on. Uh, and like, I, it's, it's just, it's just uh, physics. So what they, this is a common theme. Well, you can't drill, you can't cut. Well, okay, we've drilled, we've cut, we've polished. Like, oh, well, now you have to make a giant box you know or you, well we can split and pile lines or now you must make a pyramid and then it's well you can move things well i want to see a video you know i need to see pictures or it didn't happen but in um bright insights case it's even more ridiculous because i demand a, vid a video of something didn't happen for you to prove that it did happen the burden of evidence is on you these people are if they're not incredibly stupid uh and entitled are absolute con men uh, so now just to respond on that, because it's amazing how the fans of and who accept and never cr critical of Brian Foster or, or Brian Insight all of a sudden become like hyper skeptical um, when someone presents sort of evidence. So just to cut this off at the pass, well, how did they drag it up? You know, if you're dragging up a ramp, you need to be in, in front of it. How did they do it? They would have fallen off the end of a ramp. Uh, so back to the again bright insight set these as you know like we can only use ropes and pulleys and ramps excellent cool now notice the guys at the bottom there the rope goes around the pulley which is just a wooden pole it just changes the direction of of the um move and they're they're now walking backwards down the ramp to pull the the, the block up so you can get to the top without falling off the side and this is not even bringing in a compound pulley, but another thing worth noting is that the guys who are just pulling directly on the rope to drag it up, not only are they pulling the block up the ramp against gravity, they're also pulling themselves up the ramp against gravity. So they're essentially climbing the ramp at the same time that they're trying to pull the block, as where these guys are falling down the ramp with gravity assisting them while they're pulling on the block. So even just with a single pulley or a cha um, and a ramp, and if you go down the ramp, you've got excellent mechanical advantage. And so now you're, you know, with the same amount of energy, you're now even stronger or applying more force to the block. So the real problem looks like this. It begins up here, down, 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 down to the river. 
and then gently, gently, gently up until you get to the hardest part, which is a ramp, which is less than 10 degrees. So well within the parameters that they're set, so not a problem. But what ancient high technologists such as um, Bright Insight say, well, how did they move these massive stones from up, drag them up the top of a, a mountain, up a steep hill? Well, it's not at the top of a mountain and it's not steep. And again, they'll even move the quarry into another position. They'll, they'll, he steals there. The Inca didn't have trees. It says that, and he even puts this location, the, the Amazon basin is like just down the river a little bit. So, you know, lots of trees. And again, uh, if they're not frauds, then they're incredibly ignorant of the topic that they um, care about. And that they never develop their ideas, they never sh even they censor very heavily. They never add any corrections or come because if they take it's a house of cards, and if they pull one 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 backward step by them, the whole business, the whole industry starts to collapse, and they know it. And that's why censorship, and uh, you know, it's not even it doesn't even classify as pseudoscience, such as a thing with ramps and yeah, unbelievable, uh, not a problem. Lost ancient high technology, it's a scam. And uh, what else can you say about it? Uh, yeah, they set up a false problem that isn't there, make a small problem into a big problem, ask a lot of questions but never look for answers, demand that everyone else does your labour and your research for you while you profit from it, and then cover up anything that's contrary to the um, absolute nonsense that you spout as truth seeking. Uh, it's a, whenever if someone says seek truth or I'm a truth seeker, general rule of thumb is that they're full of crap, and that they're lying to you or they're lazy or going to or in some sort of, you know, it's some sort of deception where you're going to end up, you know, paying um, and doing the work for other people. So always watch out. Um, whenever it's what's that line from? Uh, was it the Game of Thrones when the little boy says, you know, but I'm the king. Well, and then the older fella says, if you have to tell people that you're the king, you're not. So if you have to tell people you're a truth seeker, you're not. It's a good rule of thumb. With, with that, this is, utter, this is utter nonsense. Lots of links in the description. I've posted other videos show, showing examples, explaining things like how a compound pulley works just with sticks and strings. Sticks and strings technology solves everything that they claim requires advanced technology. They don't understand ramps, they don't understand sticks and strings, and yet they comment on it and make money from it because they're, again, incredibly ignorant or scammers. With that, that's it. Cheers. Have a good one.